Hey there, how's it going you guys? I'm Cindy with Cross House Sift and Thrift, if you don't know, and uh, this is one of the hats I'm gonna be selling this week, hopefully selling it. I'm gonna at least be listing it. Just a brightly color, probably 80s, either from the 80s or 80s style, British Virgin Islands. It's got the, I got a big head, so I couldn't fit it without <laughs> taking this off, but yeah, this is one of our finds. Um, we haven't been thrifting a lot because um, my whole, I have a whole death pile over here <laughs> that I've been working on for a while. So um, trying to be good, trying not to thrift too much because of the death pile. And uh, so I will be getting that done every day. I'm just, just working on it. Um, we went to my mom's house a few weeks ago and she gave, my dad just passed away recently and she gave me um, a lot of his things to sell and I'm still working on that. It's taking quite a while to do that. Um, I'm going to be talking about very helpful tips for your business, um, websites you need to be going to, things you should be doing that will really help you grow your business. I did want to talk a little bit about sales. I know the last time I was on here talking about my sales were really great, but they've really slowed down. Even though I'm running sales, uh, usually running sales will really get me out of the slump and I'll just start getting a lot of sales. And um, yesterday I sold one thing for $8. <laughs> not very good. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to lose hope. I'm going to keep listing, but it's, it's a little frustrating and I'm sure you guys have been there. I've heard that it's slow sales for a lot of people and um, yeah, it's just what it is. So I will keep going. But I thought if I could share anything to help you guys with your business, um, you know, that will just help you make life a little easier when, when you're working your business. Um, one of the things I wrote down, I just take notes because I can't rely on the memory. <laughs> and one of the things I wrote down is if you don't know about, it's called Convert Case. I should learn this from a YouTuber. Learn a lot of things from YouTubers. You guys, if you haven't been watching YouTubers on YouTube, including myself, <laughs> you should. They're very, very, it's very useful information that they pass on. Not only do you hear about their experiences as a seller, what they've sold, um, what they're sourcing, you know, how much, uh, just everything that has to do with their business. You'll learn a lot of tips along the way that will help you and your business. And this is one I had learned. It's called convertcase.net. And you go on there and the, what I use it for and what you should be using it for is um, when I go to research a listing and let's say somebody else is, has the same listing and I'm, when I go to list this cat and I just want to use their listing, I've been told you shouldn't be using other people's listing because you know, they might have things on there that you don't want to put in your listing. Well, I, I think it's great to use someone else's listing because they filled out all, well, maybe not all of them, but a lot of the item specifics that you'll need. So you don't need to fill those out. Now you have to be very careful and look at all the uh, things they put in their listing. So let's say they had a cap, but it was blue. And then this is not blue. You want to make sure you change it. This is like a salmon color, but... I don't know what I call it, pink, I guess. Um, yeah, so you'll want to change that to pink. So you'll have to be careful if you use someone else's listing, making sure that it jives with your listing. If you're not listing the exact same item, you're going to want to change some things, maybe change the color, or if it's a uh, garment, uh, the size, that type of thing. But uh, using others' listings, I find extremely helpful than just going off on one of my listings because I won't have all the item specifics for that specific item because I don't sell like items. I sell all different kinds of items. If you're selling like items, um, yes, listing off of your existing listing, that is the way to go. But since I'm not, I use, if somebody else has a sold listing for the item I want to list, I use that. If there's not one, I go with a listed listing or if there isn't one, then I just, I'll just, um, what I'll do is I'll go to um, a cap that I have listed in my store and I'll just use that listing. So that's how I do it. Converse case net comes into play when you go to someone else's listings and let's say their listing was all capitalized in the title. Now you're not supposed to do that. So that's a no-no on eBay. You're not supposed to, sorry guys, 
not supposed to have all caps in your listing, but a lot of people still do it. So you just copy and paste it and you go to a uh, convertcase.net and they have a box there where they have a box there where you can paste the title and then you click on, they have various things you can click on. Do you want all lowercase, all uppercase, etc. What you want to click on is capitalized case, which means every letter of the first word is capitalized. Like, so every, every word, the first letter will be capitalized in that title, which is what you want to do for an eBay listing. You don't want to use all caps. You don't want to use all lowercase. You want to do capitalized case. So that's great. So then once you get the capitalized case, you click on capitalized case, it all switch to capitalized case. And then you copy that and you paste that into your title. And so that's a very useful tool. I've used that a lot. All right, eBay duplicate listings. It, you know, if you've been selling on eBay a long time, you probably come across this where you sell something that you've already sold. And it's a glitch of eBay's. They relist an item of yours unbeknownst to you and um, you sell the second item and then you don't have it because you've already sold it the first time. That's very frustrating because a lot of times I don't remember I sold it. So I'm looking through all of my totes and all my inventory going, where is it? Where is it? Why isn't it here? Well, I sold it already. <laughs> you know? But a lot of times I don't remember that I sold it because maybe it was a, a few months ago. So it's a very frustrating thing, but it, it is ha it does happen. So what you want to do periodically is you want to Google e um, eBay duplicate listings. And there is a tool where you just, um, I believe you just uh, put in your username and all your um, listings come up. And then you type in find duplicate listing and eBay will highlight all the duplicate listings. And it's really great that happened. I did that the other day and I had three duplicate listings and I deleted the duplicate. So that means you only have one listing is what you should have. So if you do that periodically, you won't have the problem where you sell the item twice. And I wish that was something eBay could just not do, but <laughs> we can't always have what we want in this world. <laughs> uh, so use that duplicate listing tool. It's very, very helpful. I would just do it like every, I don't know, a few weeks just to make sure you don't have any duplicates in your store. Usually eBay doesn't let you have duplicates. Like if, if you already have something listed and you go to list it again, eBay, eBay will say, this is a duplicate listing. But funny enough, there's a glitch that duplicates your listing, <laughs> even though they don't allow it. Go figure. All right, another good thing is the eBay fan profit calculator. Go ahead and Google it again, you guys. You could Google anything. I know I could probably give you specific, the name of the specific link to find it, but Google is our friend. So um, go ahead and find that. And then if you want to type in all the details of every listing or certain listings, it'll show you what your profit is. You'll need to know the price of the item, what you spent on it, um, if there was taxes involved, you know, fees, etc. And it'll tell you what you're making. Um, I don't really do that. Uh, maybe I should, but I've done it once. But, you know, it's very helpful if you really want to track what you're spending and what you're making on eBay. Um, another good thing is if you sold on eBay for a long time, you're going to come across those nasty buyers. Um, I had one today with this guy. I actually shipped him a smoke alarm. And it was an open package, but it was the right smoke alarm and the right package. And they sent me a nasty, this is the wrong smoke alarm with this package, which it is. And, um, and they see, and they, they sent me a picture, but they were like, that's not right. You know, they were like yelling at me and I'm like, don't give me the benefit of the doubt. Hmm. But I was under the wrong here. And I said, oh, well, I'm sorry that happened. Feel free to return it for a full refund. And um, haven't heard back from them. I think they're just trying to get money back. The funniest thing, you guys, is what I found in my experience is the buyers that are most upset are the ones who spent $10 or less. You know, it's like, really? You're going to really? Like, this one item I sold for $6. <laughs> they're quibbling about it. Okay. It's funny how the $100 item person doesn't do that. It's, I don't know if they need money or they're trying to scam. I don't know what it is, but always be kind 
And the second person I got it resolved, it was actually an item that was an open item and something was missing and I didn't realize. And so um, they just asked for a partial, they were really nice about it, asked for a partial refund and gave them four bucks and all is well with the world. <laughs> it's all right again. So um, yeah, if you want to block a buyer though, like if, you know, I probably should block that first buyer now that I think about it. Um, there is a block buyers list. You can Google it. And then what I do is I save all these things in my bookmarks. So I don't, oh, that was a weird effect. That was from a car going by. If you saw that on my wall. Uh, yeah, I have my blinds open. So uh, yeah, you just put them in your bookmarks so you don't have to Google them the next time. You just Google the first time and then put them in your bookmarks. So blocking buyers, there is a block buyer list. I've had, I've been selling online for 21 years since 2001. So uh, yeah, or maybe close to 22 years, but um, I've had this list since the beginning. It's great. It shows all the buyers I've blocked over the years. There's quite a few actually. And you just, um, what you do is you get their username, which you can see on, on, the, on the page that shows what you've sold. It'll show the username of the person who bought the item and just either copy and paste it or type it in and just say block and um, eBay will block them. So that means they cannot buy from you in the future. And I know this to be true because a long time ago, I had this really nasty person who was quibbling about the shipping was too much or something. And then I blocked them and then they go try to buy my item. They said, how dare you block me? <laughs> so I know it works. You put... You put their name on the block um, bidders list and they cannot buy any items from you. You just don't need that headache. If somebody's nasty to you, you don't need to deal with them again uh, if they try and buy something from you. So put them on the block bidder list. It's a really good thing to have. Another thing um, if for postage, if you're buying on eBay, you, most of the time you will buy on eBay, but Every once in a while, if you, if you need to send something to somebody another way, whether it's business or personal, you can use Pirate Ship or you could u use USPS.com. I would use one or the other of those because you don't want to go to the post office and wait in line. I went to the post office yesterday and drop off my um, eBay packages and there was a long line and I, it still amazes me how people wait in line at the post office. Now, if they're buying stamps, picking up a package, or sending something certified mail. Yeah, you have to stand in line for those things. But if it's mailing packages, you should be doing that online for your personal and business. If um, do pirate ship or USPS.com, it's super easy. I just sailed past everybody and put all my packages on the counter and I left. And I know people were probably jealous. <laughs> um, you know, it's like I wanted to just say to them, hey guys, just buy your postage online. You're overpaying and you're wasting your time by waiting in line. But, you know, even if you told them that, some of the people would probably still wait in line because they're old school and that's the way they've always done it. So, hey, that's fine. Do what you want. <laughs> it's just uh, for me, no. <laughs> time is money. Let me get back to work. So, eBay supplies coupon. We get those every quarter. So, we get four a year. Um, what I do to check, there's also Google it and then put it in your bookmarks. I actually have it saved as like an eBay uh, shipping supplies coupon. And I just click on that every quarter. It's $25 towards whatever you want to buy for your store. And you buy it, um, you click on the link and it has a whole bunch of things for sale. What I mostly buy are these. eBay tape. And it's nice, they give you eight of them and they last for months. It's really, really nice. If um, if the quarter is passed and I have a new coupon and I don't need them, I get, I don't know if I'm able to grab one, guys. Uh, it's a box. Yeah, I don't know where they went, actually. I think I moved them. In. And that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, it's um, what I get is an eBay box. I either get, it's usually the small ones, you know, it's just a six by six, or I'll get the eight by 10. Just once, I mostly once I ship caps or hats with, or just a small figurine or something like that, I get the boxes. And those last a while too. Um, thing, other things you can get, you can get tissue paper that has eBay's logo on it. I got that a long time ago, but I really don't use that much. 
you could get various sizes of boxes and different kinds of packing tape. Uh, what else do they sell? Other things. Oh, they sell bubble envelopes, the padded envelopes. I haven't gotten those before. Those are nice, actually. I use those a lot. Uh, so definitely be using your supply coupon. Just go check it every quarter and it's 25 bucks. Now, usually when you go to the website, they don't have anything for 25 bucks. You're usually going to have to kick in five to $10 zero money. They really do jack up the price. They give you $25, but the item is $30 that you want to buy. <laughs> so I can put in my own money, but I'm happy for it. I'm very thankful that eBay does that. It really helps your store and helps your business. So I highly recommend if you guys haven't been getting the shipping, um, the supplies coupon, do that. That's definitely going to, you know, every little bit of money helps. So that's free money. You might as well use it towards getting some supplies. If you need to change your eBay store name, that's fairly simple. You can Google that as well. And I've changed my name three times. I've, I had a second eBay store and I had like four names on that one. I've had three names for my current store. I, I got rid of my second eBay store. I just have one store right now. And it's, as you know, it's Cross House Sift and Thrift. But when I started out in 2001, it was Batten. Oh, Baton Rouge Bargains. Um, my last name was Baton, so the play on the word Baton Rouge, but I spelled it B-A-T-T-E-N, Rouge, R-O-U-G-E, Bargains. And I had that name for years. Then when I met John in 2015, I think it was when we got married in 2017, that's when I changed it to Cross House. And I had it for Cross House for a while. And then when I got a YouTube channel in... 2020, something like that, um, 2021, uh, I read that YouTube channel should have in, you know, tell what you do. So whenever someone's searching for you, they know what you do. What is your channel about? So John came up with the name Cross House Sift and Thrift because it tells what I do. I'm a reseller. So I sift and I thrift <laughs> and I thrift and I sift and all that. Uh, so anyway, that's why I changed it. But and I'm going to keep that name for a while. Now I did open a Shopify store and I called it Ragdoll Resale, just like the name Ragdoll Resale. And I started working on it. There's quite a bit to do because with the eBay store, it's very easy to set it up because eBay has a lot of it done for you and it's just very easy. This is more like um, technical stuff that you've got to do and to add items. The good thing is they sync with their eBay store. So I got a lot of items over there, but they don't put the price in and they don't put the pictures in. So I'd have to go through all these listings and put the picture and the price. I think that's something I'm putting on hold. I think if I had an assistant, that's what I can have them work on. I did have a Shopify store a few years ago. I called Tops, Tees, and Tunics. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> uh, yeah, that didn't take off. And I ended up scratching that one. But uh, not, you know, giving up on that and canceling it. But this one I thought would be fun to get some extra income because the eBay is so slow. But I really don't think it's something I'm going to pursue right now. I'm kind of on hold. I've got to work on my eBay store. That's my priority. But you want to change your store name, you are allowed to. And um, people, you know, some people say, I don't want to change it because I have all these followers. But it's really easy and it just changes, you know, like, um, now you will, it does change and you can let people know, but I never had a problem with it. I didn't lose sales over it. You will need to get a new domain name that points to that, to po points to your eBay store. So you buy it, let's say, Ragdoll Resale. I, I did buy a domain to that because I want it to point to my Shopify store. Now, I haven't even gotten that far. I, I bought the domain. I haven't even pointed to my store yet because it's not done. But um, you, that's another thing I recommend is that you get a domain name. Um, well, when you first sign up with eBay, you do not have to have a store. I recommend you get one, just the basic store even. Get the, but don't get the starter store, get the basic store because then you could run sales. I don't think you could do that with starter store. It's always good to have a store. There's just a lot more perks when you have a store than if you don't have a store. But you know, plenty of people sell on eBay without a store, but I really like having it. You could brand it. 
you get a domain name, which are very inexpensive. I get them through GoDaddy. It's about 20 bucks. And um, I always get .com. I don't get anything else. And most of the time, the names I think of, nobody else has. So <laughs> I'm fortunate. <laughs> I don't do the dashes or underscores or anything like that. I just have the name. Crosshouse Sift and Thrift, I got that no problem. Same with Crosshouse and same with Baton Rouge Bargains. So um, as long as you don't have a super popular uh, name of your store that's it's already taken, um, try and think of something unique and get a domain name which points to... Um, yeah, eBay. And uh, I use GoDaddy, but there's tons of places you could buy domain names, even cheaper. So that's something you could look into. Canva, um, I'm not, uh, they're not my sponsor or anything, but I love Canva. That's where I do all my thumbnails. I believe I pay only $13 a month and that's so I could have the use of all their pictures. It can be free, but that means you're going to have to um, not be, have use of all their pictures. So, you know, I do everything on Canva as far as graphics wise. Not only thumbnails, I do memes. I am a bookseller, I'm an author. So I've made my covers on Canva. I've done thank you notes on Canva for eBay. I've also made a bumper sticker that says Cross House Sift and Thrift that I put on my car. I've done countless things for my business through Canva. So $12.99 a month is nothing. That is, I gladly pay that. So I love Canva, but there's lots of other, you know, photo, I used to do Photoshop, but that's expensive. <laughs> so I don't, I mean, we pay it once that you own it, but um, I love Canva, I really do. But you can use whoever you want. See how this video is getting kind of long. Um, the last thing I kind of wanted to uh, touch on was ways to do research. If you get an item, obviously uh, when you're looking it up in the store, or at home after you purchase it, you can look through eBay. But let's say nobody's selling that item in eBay. So you could also do other things to find the item. You could Google it. That's great, use Google Lens. But every once in a while, I haven't found anything through eBay or Google Lens. So you could try Terapeak, which is a free search um, through eBay. You could do, yeah, go to your eBay uh, page and do a drop down that is Terapeak, or you could Google it again. Um, there's also other ways that you would have to pay for if you really, let's say you have something and you think it's really rare and worth a lot of money, but you can't find it on Google or eBay. Um, you could also try Etsy and other sites, Mercari, Poshmark. Um, but usually when you Google it, that would pop up. Those uh, Poshmark, Mercari, eBay, Etsy, those will all pop up if somebody has that item listed. So let's say it's a rare item and you can't find it. Um, you can do, uh, worth point and I think it's like 30 bucks a month. I did it for a while, but it just wasn't worth it to me. I'm not selling high end items. If you're selling high end items, it's highly, it's very worth it. I think worth point, ha ha. Worth point is worth it. Um, if you use it a lot and you're looking at like rare items that you can't find in your search, then it's great. That'll tell you, um, if any of them sold and what they sold for but you have to pay to get that information. There's, if you sell glass and pottery, silverware, that kind of thing, serveware, dinnerware, uh, vintage. Uh, I heard replacements.com is a good place for that. They do china patterns, silverware, crystal, collectibles, estate jewelry. I don't, oh, just got a little cloudy. Um, I don't sell much of those, so I never have gone to the website, but I know some YouTubers have used it and have great success with them. I've also used this site, it's called Value My Stuff. It's about $20 for an appraisal. I have maybe used them five times over the years. Um, something rare that I couldn't find on eBay or Google, you could pay them 20 bucks and they take you know a few days, not quite a week. They say they could take up to a week. They usually take maybe four or five days, maybe up to a week. And they come back with appraisal and it's really cool. They All you do is you upload the, the um, description of the item and pictures and you say whatever you know about the item you you put on there and they say and you pay your money and we'll get back to you within a week and then they come back with you and they tell you exactly what the item is they tell you uh if it's antique or vintage or 
you know, what its provenance is. And what's cool about it is you could just go ahead and copy and paste that into your eBay listing. So it gives it some credence, some credibility. And um, whenever I've done that, I've sold that item. So, um, and it'll tell you what the item is worth. They're appraising your item. So it's really nice if you have something you feel is rare and unique and, you know, worth a, a bit of money, you might want to go that route. So it's valuemystuff.com. And I really like that place. Um, I would recommend it for appraisals. Uh, so that's pretty much all I'm going to cover now. I see I've been taking a little while, but I got my little notes and I think I covered everything. But um, I was going to send you coverage. My my kids were out here. I say kids, but they're 29 and 25. Oh, Noah and Jeremiah. Um, they were visiting um, Saturday, Sunday. And... Uh, no, Saturday through Monday, Memorial Day weekend. And uh, we took, I took some footage because we were touring downtown Hermiston where we live. And I took videos of it, but when I pulled it up, it looks like it wasn't coming out very well. So I don't know if I'll be able to tack that onto this video or not, but if I do enjoy, if I don't, I hope you enjoyed this content and you learned a lot. Um, if you haven't liked and subscribe, I would really love it if you did, you guys. It really does help my channel out. And I do appreciate you. Those that watch, please tell your friends so I can get some more subscribers. Um, I just so appreciate you. If you need to get a hold of me, CrossHouseSiftAndThrift at gmail.com or go to my eBay store, CrossHouseSiftAndThrift.com or you can, um, yeah, check me out. I don't go on Facebook much or Instagram much, honestly, but... Uh, you can always get a hold of me through Gmail or my channel here. So, all right, guys, have a wonderful day. If you haven't noticed that this is, um, okay, guess who this is? <laughs> Gee, maybe this will give you a hint. Here we go. Jasmine. This is Jasmine. All right, have an awesome day, you guys, and I will see you next time. See ya. Bye, 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 bye. Bye.